was always a place that was, you know, kind of this vacation destination for us. And now I get to live here in a vacation place. And make art. And make art. And, and design. And make it in all different ways. You, you make, you're also a multimedia artist, conceptual artist. Uh, that, right. um, but you also use your hands. You do woodworking. And yes. you have your, uh, not just woodworking, but uh, material working, I guess, sculptural workings and um you have a bunch of pieces up a bunch of your artwork uh half a dozen at least uh, pieces right yeah yeah uh, are all at the plantronics right building here on Encinal. yep in the new building here in santa cruz and so uh i had the wonderful privilege of being uh shown around by gary uh in in our beautiful plantronics building and uh, kind of introduced and played with uh, your pieces there. So uh, we're going to talk about that. Sure. Uh, there's another exciting big piece of thing happening right now where you are going to be in the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new exhibition opening up. I guess it's a third Friday. Is that that is a third. I think that is a third Friday. It's on the 14th. Or the, the actual opening, no. I think, is on the 15th. Actually, it's not December. a third Friday. Sometimes they do these third Friday things. That's is why that I a, Is that a Saturday? In, it is a Saturday. The okay. 15th is a Saturday. Yeah, that's open to the public, I, I'm pretty sure, on the 15th. But you can confirm that on the website. And so the, the exhibition will feature works in progress. Correct. And one of the... In fact, I think there's two very large gallery spaces that are just white walls... And uh, we will be able to watch as the Santa Cruz Ma uh, gallery, uh, as um, participants and um, audience members, right. we will be able to go from time to time and watch these works as they progress. As they progress, exactly. And by... Oh, how, how long of the course? Well, it's until March 15th. Okay. Yeah, it's a, a three-month opening, I think. So it's, you know, there will be a series nice. of different pieces happening. Thomas Campbell is going to do a, a whole room. I think he's going to wrap, you know, uh, a painting around an entire room, which wow. will be really cool to watch, you know, happen. I'm so excited that Gary's doing this because he is such a great artist and it's just wonderful to see you out and, and in the public. This yes. is our public place, exactly. folks. Yeah. This is our Santa right. Cruz Museum. And so you're going to be doing it with uh, a sketch a day. Yeah, sketch a day. I think um, there will be five artists in my little group um, doing a sketch a day. And um, it was supposed to happen where a sketch would go up every day. And I think the sketches will actually go up in groups rather than you know, one per day, so that a group of nine sketches will go up, and then, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to be a week or, or what, but then you'll see another group of sketches go up. And I could be completely wrong with that, and it might they might all go up at the same time. But it is based on a sketch a day. So, folks, what that means is you are going to have to go to Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History and find out what the heck and is going on. Out. We know that there'll be a sketch a day. But yes. how that process actually works out will we'll probably be fine-tuned during the three months. <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the whole thing was, was based on me last, I think it was December, December 15th of last year. I, you know, I was kind of doing more design than art, and I thought, okay, I've got to actually get back to my art. And so what can I do that won't, you know, take a lot of time away from family and um, you know, my design career and, and clients and life. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do a sketch a day. And, and it happened that, you know, I would find 10 minutes a day to do a sketch. Um, and, and these sketches just, they happened every day. I haven't missed a day since last December 15th. So wow. this December will be one year of a sketch a day. And I was telling this story to Susan um, Hillhouse at the Ma, and she said, oh, you've got to be part of, you know, our, our show, Works in Progress. And so that's how the sketch a day got applied. And it was funny because they, you know, wanted to do these, a sketch, you know, every day, go up onto the wall. And I think it's, it's kind of changed, like we talked about before, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And will it be figurative? 
some of my work is figurative. I do some portraits. Um, right, but the sketch a day. Are you going to bring in models? Are you going to bring in fruit? Like what? <laughs> you know, that's also part of this this whole kind of um, this study for me is is being in the moment. And so there's no, you know, it's not really forced. I, it's not planned that I bring a model in or that I have to go out and draw a tree. But it's it's more an exercise of being present and moment. Or, present in this moment and you know in in our in our modern day life when we're so busy and we're we're running constantly all day this is a time that i can take and i just slow down and i do you know i concentrate on one object and that might be you know the glass that's sitting next to me or um you know it might be a a a portrait a face or or a landscape so it's it's kind of just whatever i I sit down and I see, and I can just take time to focus on. And so, Gary Maricic, will you yes. be talking, um, will you be going into, let's say, will I be able to go every day at 11 o'clock and see what you're working on? Is there going to be a specific time that we're going to find you, or are we just going to find your work? I kind of think you will find the work. <laughs> ah, because so um, you'll be like an elf coming yes. in and creating. <laughs> exactly. You'll come in and... <laughs> The work will magically like appear onto <laughs> the wall. Gary does amazing work, both um, uh, visually as a as uh, with your drawing and painting. Um, you also do digital art, and like mm -hmm. I was saying earlier, you do sculpture. You create um, sculptures out of found debris, uh, used debris. I got brought on by Darren Cadiz and Suzanne Teichman to do some art direction with the brand team for this whole expansion that they just, you know, went through. And they worked with Ginzler Architects out of San Francisco. And they This had, is Plantronics, folks, is what right, we're talking about. Right, Plantronics here in Santa Cruz, California. That's right. So I, I was brought on to do a lot of different things. And it was basically coming up with graphics and, you know, everything from wall graphics on the glass so that people would not, like, walk through these beautiful glass walls that separated out the main workspace from the conference rooms to um you know concepts for the the grand hall into the workplace and so we we came up with all of these concepts and probably a hundred different ideas and the ones that stuck were using the plantronics parts and little le electronic pieces that were in these dumpsters getting ready to go to landfill and you know reusing those pieces to actually create their logo or, or pieces of artwork up in the new space. And so the first thing I did is I went and I found these two huge dumpsters in the back room at Plantronics filled with, you know, electronic parts and cables and wires and all of this crazy stuff. Headsets. Headsets, yes. And little, uh, like, you know, the Plantronic and uh, products. All with Plantronics logos. And <laughs> that was the rule is that I had to use anything, you know, Plantronics material. So... I went back to the studio with thousands of parts, and everybody thought I was crazy, but I cut these up, and I assembled them back into... Um, Plantronics has this logo, and it's called the Sound World Graphic. And so basically, it's a cityscape. It looks, it looks like a sound wave. It goes up and down, and, and if you look at it really close, it's a cityscape reflected. And mm. so... Uh, it's San a, Francisco. Well, they're iconic oh, buildings. That's right. So, you know, one is the Transamerica Tower and then St. Peter's, you know, um, Cathedral. There was a Sears Tower, I saw. A Sears Tower. And the, right. it's a, um, the Empire State Building, yep. the New York. Right. Chrysler Building, New York. So, so these buildings are, you know, they're part of the skyline, the world skyline. And they were the iconic, you know, um, shapes of the world. And so I probably used, I didn't count, you know, how many pieces I used to assemble into these eight foot long, um, you know, I took the logo and I blew it up so that it was eight feet long by three feet tall. And the pieces just went together beautifully to form, you know, the buildings. And from afar, it appeared to be the, the graphic, the logo. But then the closer you got, you noticed that, wow, there were like hundreds of little parts, even thousands of little parts that were all assembled to create this this logo. And so, you know, it's it's illusion that I love to play with. And that was, um, you know, 
really fun to do with with all these electronic parts. And there was a sister piece. And then piece it also that. it goes around its corner, so you right. you have this uh, ninety degree angle in it that you can see the sound logo, the soundscape right. logo from f in both directions, kind of like in a two point perspective. <laughs> right. It, it actually wrapped around three sides of that. That it's called a little. Um, conversation booth and so the inside of that booth that this piece wrapped around was lined with carpet and you can go in and actually you know have a quiet conversation and so the, the goal and still was be in the middle of a big room exactly yeah. right because it's hard when you're in in the middle of that big floor with all the employees in their in their stations to have a private conversation is a little difficult unless you walk out into the hallway or go into this little room and so we tried to make all parts of Plantronics kind of pleasing with graphics and color and furniture and motif and a lot of good art. stuff. A lot, a lot of great of art. art. Yeah, they they bought off on the art and um, credit to them for you know going for it and and allowing this to happen within their Santa Cruz campus. Yeah, really great. Yeah, so you're listening to uh, Gary Maritzic. He is here talking about his work that is up now at the Plantronics, the the new building. What's the building called? It's you know, it's the main building on Encinal, and the I think it's a three four five building. The three four five, three three three, and three four five. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the pieces is how long would you say? Did you? It was three feet wide by eight feet long. Yeah, so that would be on the face, and then a three foot section wraps around the, you know, the, the wall, the cubby, bear, right? Yeah. And then um, on the the front side of the sound booth, on the opposite side, another three piece section of the material of the sound world graphic, kind of, you know, kind of fades in to that side. And you can some of the pieces you can actually play with. They're like you can. They're little broken little springs right. And, right. and little headphones and little like doors you can slide open and close and um, you could really spend a lot of time <laughs> playing with this piece of artwork. Now you have a similar piece made from ca uh, found wood. Yes, redwood from well, the, the thing was to tell the story of Santa Cruz and so, w you know, with Plantronics in mind. So when you think of that, you've got the Santa Cruz Mountains and the Redwoods and then you've got Plantronics, this, you know, tech company here in Santa Cruz doing, wor you know, work on a global level. And so tech, you know, tech pieces, like little pieces of electronics was one piece and so the the alternate piece to that was the Redwood. So. Um, what I did is I, I, I waited for, I, I went searching for little branches and, and things in the Santa Cruz area and couldn't really find much. And then about a month before the piece was to be installed, I didn't have any redwood yet, maybe a couple of branches from neighbor's yards, you know, here in town. And then there was a huge windstorm up in, you know, uh, in this area. And, um, my wife and I run in Poganet State Park at times. And so... After the windstorm, we went up running and found all of these little branches that had fallen from the redwood trees. And um, people must have thought we were crazy because we started picking them up. I'm like, this is perfect. We need this for, for the, you know, for the Plantronics piece. And so we had probably a hundred branches and we carried them back to the car. And I went up, you know, two other times. I brought the girls, you know, with me and we all had little bags and... We probably gathered, you know, thousands of sticks from little twigs to big branches. And then I, I used the bandsaw to, you know, cut them into really cool little shapes and glue them on and, you know, fun configurations to recreate the sound world graphic. So you had this organic sound world graphic and then you had, you know, this this like tech. machine tech graphic. Right, right, yeah, right. Telling the same story, actually. Yeah, yeah. And if you are trying to imagine this piece in your mind, you can go and will be able to go to artistonart.com and I will have a video up of Gary talking about these pieces and you'll get to see um, exactly what he's talking about uh, up close and from far distances, but of tr really trying to give you the experience of, of, of uh, seeing these pieces. Um, 
and a lot of them are ones you want to touch as well, obviously, these two sure. in particular. Another one that you really, really want to touch is the giant uh, instrument that you made. Yes. It's a, a guitar, um, but it's not called a guitar. What do you call it? You know, there, there were so many names that came up for this piece, but it's basically a sound box. So I call it the Sound World Sound Box, and it's, it's basically made... Um, with guitar construction in mind like you know i i call myself a designer and artist but also a maker and i've made since i was a little kid in the workshop with my grandfather and my my dad in berkeley in his picture framing studio so i've, I've always made and i and i just love designing but i love making as well so this um this piece was inspired by me getting really interested in playing the ukulele and and then mm. restoring them and then building them and i thought okay i'm going to i'm going to create this interactive piece of art for plantronics and it's going to be an instrument that the employees can you know walk by and actually you know take their badge and play a tune on the strings as they're walking by and so it 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 started um you know i tried to figure out how to use the sound world graphic with this piece and in every guitar or stringed instrument there's a sound hole and that's where the the sound will actually come out you know as the strings are you you pluck a string and the vibration goes through the bridge through the the top of the wood into the sound hole and then it comes back out of this beautiful sound and so i thought man i don't know how to do this but i'm going to make a big box that will you know be like a guitar and so I, you know, I did all these drawings and I took all these measurements and then I tried to, you know, figure out how do I get the scale length correct to play a tune? Like I'm going to have, you know, vertical strings on this horizontal piece and um, I've got to figure out how to make, you know, this thing make music. So I went to Santa Cruz Guitar Company and talked to Richard Hoover and he thought, you know, this is crazy, but... I think it's really cool and he gave me this chart with all of the different scale lengths and you know um resonance and there's a whole science of string diameter as to the note it will will make at a certain megahertz so anyway it's perfect for a sound company right all the sound engineers came out with their little instruments and they're measuring like you know the vibration of the strings when i finally <laughs> actually did install it and um, it was great. So anyway, I ended up figuring it out, and you know, long story short, there's a six foot long by 18 inches tall, four inches thick. Um, I guess you would call it a, a wall harp, a guitar, you know, a sound box, and it plays a C major chord up and down, a scale, C major scale. So it it goes up one octave and back down. And you get to play with it. You you have you slide it along with your badge, and you can make a tune, pencil or pen, whatever. anything, anything. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, this is uh, KZSC Santa Cruz. You are listening to Artist on Art. We have an extra special half hour time tonight um, for Tiff time. Uh, so KZSC thanks Monterey College of Law for supporting this program. For over 40 years, Monterey College of Law has offered serious students the opportunity to seek a career change, re-enter the workforce, or advance their current professional career by obtaining a legal education. Courses are taught by practicing lawyers and judges who emphasize training in legal skills and professional responsibility. Small classes and flexible schedules at both their Seaside and Santa Cruz campus allow students an opportunity to attend law school in the evening. To find out about scholarships, admissions, or other information, contact Monterey College of Law at 831-582-4000 or at the web, on the web at montereylaw.edu. As a non-commercial educational radio station, KZSC supports free expression of ideas. Please be aware of the, that the opinions expressed of those of the speakers or artists only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the UC Regents, KZSC staff, management, or underwriters. We welcome your feedback on our programming. 
please direct your com- comments to the Program Review Committee by calling 831-459-4726 or emailing prc at kzsc.org. I've got Raquel Cool is still here in the house. Thanks, yeah. Raquel, for hanging. And Gary Maritzic is here talking about uh, many of his pieces that are on display at the Plantronics office uh, building. That is the new building, 345 on Encinal here in Santa Cruz. And uh, again, if you are trying to imagine what these pieces look like, you will be able to find uh, the video on artistonart.com and see... Uh, what the pieces that Gary is talking about and um, in their environment, where how how it looks in the new building. The new building was uh, uh, LEED certified. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were uh, very cognizant of the green materials, trying to use the most green and and the most efficient means of those materials. Right. Yeah, I I think, um, I don't know to what level it was certified, um, but Ginsler worked really hard to, you know, source local material if they could um, and use, you know, sustainable products and, and things that were, you know, um, made to last, you know, not, not throw away furniture. I mean, Plantronics, um, you know, spent a, a large sum of money actually creating this space and um, it, it shows. It's just really, really well done and... I think um, the employees are, are liking it as well. There's a whole new um, portion of this that's recently completed, and um, I was talking to Darren Caddis about it, um, and he worked directly with with um, Ginsler on this last um, kind of iteration. And they used a lot of reclaimed wood for the walls, which is going to work out perfectly with, with all of the art that we, you know, created for the space. So... And you were you were asked to create this artwork. Part of the, I guess the philosophy uh, at Plantronics is that uh, people are happier if there's art in their environment. Yeah, I you know I think the the company is I don't know a huge amount about it, but I I do know that people that work there are really happy, and I think the you know. The powers that be at Plantronics, and I don't need to name everybody, but they they actually want to create an environment where their employees are are truly happy at work, and you know, like being there. And you can truly feel that when you when you go in. The team I worked with, I started out working with the brand team, um, Suzanne Teichman and Lisa Orsini, and um, we you know we brainstormed so many great ideas. Um, through that that team and and came up with you know so many good ideas that it wasn't even possible to do all of them so the ones that have been done are are pretty special because you know it was probably 10 percent of what we we dreamt up from the space so anyway great place truly collaborative totally Totally. Yep. yep. Totally it's wonderful. And then Gary Maritzic is also here in the house talking about his work. Uh, he has, we, we could be talking a lot more. And luckily mm-hmm. tonight we've got another 20 minutes because uh, right. TIFF time uh, was nice enough to give me their time because they needed the help. So here we are. The Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History will be showing their final movies at the museum installment, The Cult classic Troll Hunter on Friday, December 14th, a Norwegian mockumentary directed by Andre Overdahl. Troll Hunter features a bizarre blend of sci-fi, horror, fantasy, and of course, lots of trolls. Come enjoy the movie, popcorn, troll drinks, and talk by Felton Bigfoot Discovery Museum's Mike Rugg about Bigfoot and the local search. Doors are open at 7.30 p.m. For more details, call the museum at 420-6115. I saw the movie, and let me tell you, it is fabulous. You're laughing and screaming at the same time. It's it's amazing. And as a community service, KZSC airs public service announcements for local nonprofit organizations and events. If your group has something special going on and you'd like us to help get the word out, email kzsc at psa at kzsc.org. More information and guidelines about submitting announcements can be found on our website, kzsc.org. And yay, got all that done. Yay. 
Yay. <laughs> nice. So Raquel's got an exhibition, uh-huh. and uh, Gary's going to be having an exhibition called uh, Works in Progress, opening December 15th at the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History, and it will be running three months, folks. And the really fun aspect of this piece is that you will get to watch how artists... Uh, progress how how their work changes and so every time you go into the museum for the next three months it's going to be a different it's going to be a different show Mm -hmm. and so gary's going to be doing a sketch a day a sketch a day a sketch a day now will people be able to come in and sketch with you that's a good question if they catch you because you're going to be like an elf in and out yeah that 2 30 a.m thing i don't know if they'll really catch me but (laughs) You know, I think that would, we should talk to Nina and, and Susan about that. They might, you know, they're, that's what the great thing about Ma now is that, um, you know, Nina has brought such a, a life to the museum. Not that it wasn't there before, but now the, the world of possibilities have just been opened up and so many great things are happening, you know, around. So, you know, a suggestion like that would probably be heard and and, and even truly happen. Yeah, and if she, I mean, they, they yeah. run with it. They grab yeah. it and they run. Exactly. And, and um, it's, it's great to have somebody um, like Nina Simon at the helm. Um, her book, Museum 2.0, uh, really spells out her belief in this participatory mm-hmm. new world of uh, conceptual and contemporary art and the idea that... Uh, Art uh, is no longer just looking at something that's on the wall, but it's actually also being engaged and possibly picking up the pencil and sketching along next to the artist and uh, waiting yeah. in line for a drink made with human breast milk and, and oh, talking yeah, about... Oh, you breast milk too? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. oh, there you go. Propose it to them. <laughs> Um, but when you were describing your work earlier, it sounds like it's very playful and tactile. And um, is this like level of engagement and participation something that is has been in your work in the past, or you do you feel like you're coming more into it now? That's actually a good question. I think you know I've always thought that that art should be you know touched and looked at and and not on a museum wall where you have to stand mm. you know three feet back or the buzzer goes off if you get too close <laughs> and you get reprimanded. It's true. And so, you know, um, yeah, I think it, the, the whole interactive thing is, is really great. And so, you know, making something that, that your audience can actually touch and use and, and learn about, and especially for kids, if they can, you know, be inspired by, by a piece, that's huge because that could change the direction of a life. So, it can. Yeah. It can. That that idea can be planted in the brain and drive that person in a different direction. That maybe it seems like children are the first to. Um, they're just so comfortable with are you know participating to that extent. Whereas adults are sometimes, you know, they ask you like, "Oh, am I supposed to sit down in this chair, or am I supposed to just look at it?" And it's like, no, right. it's, it's for sitting in the yeah. chair. You yeah. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's for drinking. <laughs> you can drink it. Yeah, you can talk. Yeah. You can, yeah. yeah. Pick up the pencil and, mm-hmm. and draw. I mm-hmm. would love to do that with mm-hmm. you, Gary. Uh, Gary also has done uh, installation work. He created the sets for our two Santa Cruz uh, uh, TEDx Santa Cruz events mm-hmm. that we've done oh, now. Nice. And they were beautiful beautiful pieces you, uh, you, uh, stage installation yes. work for a theatrical event um, and yet with TEDx you have to play within the TED rules you mm-hmm. have only a mm-hmm. certain number of colors that mm-hmm. you can use there's, it, there's, there's quite a bit of guidelines yeah. if you're going to use their brand it better be close or spot on right and and mm-hmm. rightfully so, you know, it's a it's a very strong brand. Ted has this worldwide presence, and yeah. you know the the whole uh, branding thing is very important. So you know, to work within those guidelines wasn't actually hard because it's so well done, and you know, you get a a series of of directions from the design team that came up with with that whole you know package, and it it was very easy to work within those parameters and create you know a minimal there there are different suggestions you know one of the suggestions is to create a library feel on stage and to do you know different things but 
I'm I think I'm more of a minimalist. I I like it to be about especially in that in that, you know, arena. Uh it should be about the speaker and the message rather than, you know, a flashy stage. And so um it was really fun to create a very minimal stage, but also have a little fun with it. This year we used a door that, you know, all the speakers walked through and there was a window next to the door and um the theme was open and so we, what we wanted to do is actually open that window at the end of the performance, um, but unfortunately, we rigged it in such a way that <laughs> there were nails going into the side, and it it closed the window, so it was a fixed window, so the the open theme didn't quite work out so well. But uh, could have had somebody crashing through the <laughs> yeah. the closed window. Right. I'm not going to let that hold me back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Irene Holombo, you know, she could have pulled that off. Ah, she was yes. one of the MCs. <laughs> Dove yeah. right through. Exactly. <laughs> that would have been a sight. Right. So for our dear audience, Gary, TEDx Santa Cruz is this uh, yearly event. We just started it a couple of years ago. And it follows the TEDx um, organization. And so TED being technology, entertainment, and design in this uber expensive uh, but incredible experience where thinkers and doers come together and speak uh, either for eight minutes uh, 12 minutes I believe and I think 16 might be the longest right. that they allow the talks to be 18 I think somewhere and around there so you have a very specific um, formal requirement of how your uh, presentation of your idea or your work comes across and uh, we um, it's we grasped this Santa Cruz and we um, own it and then we've now got TEDx Santa Cruz and uh, Gary Maritich uh, has created uh, two beautiful um, sets, sets uh, but they're also installation art pieces yeah. And so, Gary, you also come from, uh, you, you've you painted icons. Yes. Tell us Back a little bit Italy. about that. You know, I, so I, I studied interior architecture. And um, I worked for a couple of years in the field down in L.A. designing furniture for a company and traveled all over, you know, to the, to the big furniture shows. And I always wanted to go study in, in Italy and... Um, you know, learn the Italian style of furniture making and design. And I tried to make contacts and I just couldn't. And this was like two years of, of this process. And um, one day, I actually moved back to the Bay Area from L.A. And um, I was I knew I was going to go to Italy. I just said, this is my next move. I've got to go. Um, I knew that furniture design was probably not going to happen. So I... Um, my dad came home from, from work one day, and he said, I just met a woman who knows a fresco uh, restorer. He's 85 years old, retired, and he takes on five apprentices per year. And if you want, uh, she'll, you know, she's, she'll be willing to talk to him. And so the next day I was at her studio in Oakland with my whole portfolio. How do I go study with this man? And um, the next thing you know, she gave a phone call. I wrote a letter in Italian to, to him, and he accepted me as one of his five apprentices for the year. And I didn't know where I was going to stay, what I was going to do, but I left with my 200 pounds of luggage and went to Italy on January 1st, 1990. And, um, and I ended up staying for four years, and I worked and studied with Leonetto. And I learned not only fresco painting and restoration on the fresh lime plaster with the raw pigment, but how to grind our own pigments. And there was a there was a master who's gone on to to actually restore many many you know um, important works all over Europe. And he was working with Leonetto to teach us how to 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 um, paint in the typical panel painting style of, of 1500s and that would be you know layers of gesso over the wood the wood the birch wood you know hand cut board and then the bowl clay and the 24 karat gold leaf you know um, applied to that and and then you would paint with tempera 
and you mixed your tempera with egg and, and raw pigment. And so I can talk all night about this, but in, in the end, it was just an amazing experience of being in Italy, working with incredible people and learning this, this almost lost art of fresco painting that was completely incredible. There was a couple more pieces at the Plantronics new building that you created, um, some of it collaboratively. Uh, one of the pieces is a giant painting that has a really great hall, so you can see it from really far away. Yes. And it's, uh, it's been pixelated. It's, it's been overblown, the pixels in a way, so you don't really see it until you're far, 20 feet away. Right. Uh, but when you're up, 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 up it, it's, it's hard to see what it is. But it's a curl. It's, it's a surfer in a, in a wave, yeah. in a curl wave. It's, it's Vince Brolio in a, middle, in a middle peak wave, a huge wave. And who took the, the photograph? So the photograph was taken by O'Neill staff photographer Mark Prefontaine, and he allowed us a one-time use of, of the photograph. Deception of the eye. Like, I love to, you know, make art that makes people think, and you have to look at it from different viewpoints, and it's dynamic. So I decided, let's pixelate Mark's photograph. So up close, it would appear to be, you know, a series of colorful swatches. And and then as, as you... you you know, walked away and looked back, it would reveal into his image of, of you know, this surfer dropping in on a on a huge middle pink wave. And so Darren Caddis got involved with me, and we took, you know, he did some color correction, and I did some, and, and in the end, we turned his kind of blue-green tone ocean photograph into this kind of hot, kind of reddish-orange um, toned a piece and so there's actually a lot to, to talk about with this piece because we not only did you know we broke that up into to horizontal panels to kind of play with with the composition um you know took one photograph and and chopped it up into i think seven vertical horizontal panels but then we had um we wanted to represent the surfboard and we we were thinking oh this looks like a 70s you know surf scene so we need like a 70s like an uh, endless summer. Yeah, exactly. And it really had that feel. Yeah, cool. That's I <laughs> love that you saw that. So well, it's the colors, I guess. Yeah, I think the color, the the, the palette, you know, talks about that that movie. Anyway, um, we couldn't find the perfect board. We found, you know, we thought we found the perfect board that that Vince Brolio found for us that was shaped by Joey Thomas in the seventies, and the color didn't work, so we couldn't use the board. So I ended up finding um, Ventana Surf Company, and they make wood surfboards, hollow surfboards. They're just amazing. Each one is a piece of work of art in itself. And so we, we commissioned them to make a piece for this piece that, you know, they did, and it's now in Plantronics, and it was made with a deck that was taken apart in Ben Loman, old redwood that would have been... Wow thrown away and it got repurposed and so it continued this story of repurposing material for you know not only the the build out but the artwork in Plantronics. unfortunately we only have a couple more minutes uh everybody oh. what, what do we got coming on hold on let me see uh but in the meantime tell us about the last big piece uh it has it's a it's a redwood grove yep um it's it's about what four or five redwood trees or more yeah we took a picture darren took a picture of of redwoods in henry cow state park and um so we blew that up again into this eight foot you know square piece and pixelated it and then i actually had some friends um, cutting down some redwood trees on their property to build their house and they actually gave me three tops of trees that i that i actually used the actual tree and installed those pieces much like the surfboard was installed in front of the other piece uh the three um pieces of or redwood trees were installed actually in the hallway at plantronics in front of the piece so it became again this multi-dimensional kind of experience so, folks, again, if you uh, if you if you want to try to imagine it and and see the real thing, <laughs> if you're tired of imagining, you can go to Artist on Art and you can see the video with Gary in front of his pieces, um, and you'll be able to hear him talk about it. Raquel, cool. Thank you so much. 
have a, a fabulous uh, performance tomorrow night, first Friday, Santa Thank Cruz. You. Everybody go out, do their art tour. Gary Maritzic, I hope I get to come in and sketch a day with you. Yes. Uh, every day he's going to be making a sketch, and uh, we'll be able to see that in the Works in Progress opening December 15th at the Santa Cruz Ma. Everybody, please stay tuned with Dusty Planet. Thanks for listening to this very special um uh, Artist on Art tonight. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Thank thanks you, so Nora. much. Thank yeah. you, Gary. Thank you, mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> You're so cool. <laughs> now, let's see. I wanna, I'm going to put some more. Got Tan Project. Stay tuned, everybody. <laughs>